Okay, here's where we're bending the sides. We're here with Mark Lauby, and he's going to show us what we're doing here. Now, if you, if you just look around us, you see all these various machines. In a lot of factories, you'll see people soaking sides in water to get them wet. We've discovered that if we put paper on the sides, it kind of acts like a parchment paper when you're baking a pastry, and it holds the moisture that's uh, normally in the wood inside, and there's quite a bit of steam in there. He's going to give it one little spritz. That's all the water these are going to get. And then wrap this, wrap this in the paper. That creates enough steam for everything to happen. Goes on the first bender here. It's completely automatic. You can see that he's got a return, a slow button, and a fast button. Depending on the wood, we have to bend it at different speeds. Now, uh, certain woods like sapele are kind of actually difficult to bend, where woods like rosewood are really easy to bend. They just they, they work really nicely for that. You can see how this is moving real, real slow, and eventually it's going to just have this curve bent in it, you can see that kind of represented in this bender. The second step for this is to go into this machine. This side is coming out right now. And when this one's done being bent, the light will come on, it's ready to go. He can open it up and he'll stick it in there. These sides are piping hot. They're bent at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they've been popped into this little keeper form. If I touch this, I mean, I can't even hold my hand on it. It's so hot. Everything is packed inside the paper. This overbends the side because the sides, it's the heat that allows the side to, uh, to bend. So when you take it out, you've got to cool it in a form that's really kind of overbending it because there's a little spring back. So here we have our completed side. We've got notches and little laser marks and everything, and these things are ready to go into the molds now. The machines work fabulous. It's something that we've designed in our factory, built right here. And one guy can run through this. We've got five shapes. Three hours for 75 guitars worth of sides. We get in, get out. They're all perfect. They're in the exact right shape. They fit in the molds. No breakage. So it's a wonderful thing. The bracing on the top, of course, uh, makes a huge difference in how the guitar sounds. We have a lot of different bracing patterns depending on which guitar model it is. Um, this is really for a 200 series guitar right here. So each one of these braces is pre-manufactured in our milling shop to the exact shape that we want it to be. Some of these parts are there just to stabilize the guitar, prevent it from cracking, making it strong in places. These are little parts made out of super thin uh, laminate, and then they're, la they're lasered out to the exact right shape. We use templates to put everything in place so that we can figure out where we want bracing and it ends up in the same place every time. We've got these clamping presses here that are basically a, a rubber blanket. We draw a vacuum on it. It's a pretty typical setup for a lot of guitar factories. We'll give that about five or 10 minutes of drying, and then we're able to take it out. The glue's clamped and ready to go, and then it's just time to clean up the glue that oozes out after that. You know, I'm working right now on the sound of acoustic guitars. I've just... Uh, uh, started working on different shaping for bracing that can control the sound a little bit better, bring out more of one frequency, less of another. Sound is a, is a fantastic goal. An efficient factory is a fantastic goal. There's always an underlying goal. If you're, 
if you own an American factory making American guitars to keep efficient enough to keep the jobs right here to make the guitars here. We're building bodies in this area here. We use a team approach. There's five or six guys that are working together moving bodies from the bent sides and the brace tops all the way to the point where the tops and backs are glued on. It's a, actually a fairly quick process because everything is tooled so well. The first step is to simply get the guitars into the frame or the molds. So each one of the molds are made out of aluminum, like you see here. They're accurate, they're strong, and every shape is represented, both cutaways, left-handed, right-handed. Now the guitar gets put on what we call a bowl sander. Just the weight of the machine, or the weight of the part, will cause that guitar to just slowly settle down until it doesn't sand anymore. Meanwhile, the guitar that was in there before is in this machine here where the program is loading, and we've got a CNC router coming in and carving a more complex shape on the top. Where the back is spherical shape, the top is really a blend of cylinders and spheres and ramps. There's a lot of complex geometry that goes on it. Therefore, we use a router to do that work. This router is running around the edge of the guitar and cutting all of the shapes, cutting the ramp, and then, and then it's going to also cut the notching for the braces because we know exactly where the braces are going to go. So it cuts real accurate notching. Once all of that has been routed, it comes out and then by hand with some templates we'll cut slots for the back braces on the back side of the guitar. The guitar gets checked with a micrometer to make sure that it's the right thickness. Then the appropriate template gets put in place. Then we simply make a cut with a saw and then we route in between those, those saw marks. Once that operation is done, then the guitars move into the area where they're assembling the bodies. Each assembler has everything he needs on his bench, kind of a lazy Susan type of a fixture to be able to work all the way around the guitar body. He's got his top and his back. He fits the bracing, does the final shaping and paring down of the braces. And then when that's all done, everything is glued into place and it goes into this carousel clamp. Each guitar requires about 30 minutes of drying time for, to be able to take it out of the clamp. And so this thing is set up with six stations on it all the way around. After the bodies are assembled with the tops and backs glued on, then there's an operation where we route the tops and the backs flush. Then it's a matter of smoothing the sides out. It's not a lot of work to do these because our side benders give us such a beautiful side, so they're even thickness. We don't have to sand them very much to get them even and true. We have binding that's made of wood, fiber, plastic. Uh, there's abalone that goes into guitars. We've got uh, plastic bound 300 series going together. It's a matter of spreading the glue getting a really good solid unbroken glue joint between the, the layers of plastic and between the body. It's a pretty quick operation but it takes a lot of skill. When you first start doing it, it seems to take forever. You end up with sore hands, sore thumbs. Then eventually people work up the skill to be able to do this and they just whip around the guitar pretty quickly. 
We break up all of our thinking into inside curves and outside curves. And so you'll see that we'll do sections. Right now he's doing what we would think of as an inside curve. That's where we feed binding into the curve to make sure there's no gaps. The whole technique of getting this thing bound is really thinking about what type of curve you're doing. Once that part's done, then he'll work on stretching the binding around the next outside curve. Then he'll come and do the, the following curve after that. If the guitar is bound in plastic, we use a solvent-based glue that takes overnight to dry. So this guitar really will be, will, it'll require that it sit until tomorrow before we can take the tape off and do the scraping and the flush trimming of the binding and sanding the guitar. For that reason, we tend to let every guitar go overnight, but if the guitar were bound in wood, for example, the glue's dry in 30 minutes and you could move on to the next step.